Hey everyone, today's Seeker Plus is sponsored by Lego. We've been playing around with the new Lego Technic series here at Seeker. It's real life advanced building. From sports cars to hydraulic movers, if you build for power and speed, then visit lego.com slash technic to find your next Technic build. That's lego.com slash technic, which is T-E-C-H-N-I-C. Lego Technic, build for real. We're also sponsored by WGU. WGU is an online university that offers affordable degrees in business, IT, and healthcare. Their innovative learning model is designed to fit the lives of busy adults. Many industry certifications are included in their IT degree programs at no extra cost. If you're interested, you can get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash seeker. Okay. So let's get into this. Hey y'all, Trace again here for Seeker Plus, and this week we're starting a new series, and so this is episode one of three in our series on gravity. So make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes in this series. If you haven't watched the show before, we take a big topic, we break it into a bunch of chunks so everybody understands it a bit better. You can also find us over on SoundCloud and iTunes, Spotify, Megaphone, Anchor, wherever you get your podcasts, and you can get an audio version of this whole series squished into one. So go do that today. We're gonna talk about what gravity is, where it comes from, different types of gravity, the pathetic weakness that is gravity, and why it's just so difficult to grasp and understand. So, let's kick into it. A friend of mine had a shirt when I was growing up that I just thought was the best, and it said, gravity, it's not just a good idea, it's the law. <laughs> gravity is a surprisingly simple concept. Two things with mass, no matter how large or small, tend to attract each other or fall toward each other in space. That's all gravity is. And yet, the why and the how of gravity is just magnificently complicated. And its importance also cannot be overstated. Without gravity, we would fly off the planet. There would actually be no planet, of course, because the mass wouldn't have formed together into a planet and there'd be no solar system anyway because the sun wouldn't have the energy to have held itself together against the exploding forces inside of it. And of course, then there would be other forces of nature. So without gravity, the universe would just be completely flat and featureless and horrible. Also, we wouldn't be here and there'd be no ice cream. But to understand gravity, we should probably go back to the beginning. And at first, when you think of gravity, you probably think of the guy, the apple and the tree and all of that, Isaac Newton. He's a British dude, born in the 17th century, and at the time, he showed up and said, hey, there's no easy way to describe the changing universe over time. And he was right. Galileo had already seen the movements of Jupiter's moons and the scars on the moon. He died the year Newton was born, by the way. And because of Galileo, we knew that the universe was not a perfect, flawless picture that some had believed at the time. It was imperfect, it was messy, and Ptolemy, he was wrong. The Earth was not the center of everything. And my jefe Galileo, he observed those movements, but he didn't create orbital models. He just looked out there and said, hey, there's stuff moving, but he didn't have a way to describe those movements easily. So my boy Isaac shows up, and he helps describe orbital dynamics and invented calculus. He was also the first to create hypotheses on optics and the composition of light. He, of course, created Newton's three laws of motion, which were updates to Kepler's laws. He created the law of universal gravitation. He did a lot of stuff. But the thing that you probably know about Newton, the thing that you've heard the most, is that an apple fell on his head and he was all like, gravity, which kind of minimizes his Stuff, right? Like, he's actually way smarter than that. He didn't just get hit by a piece of fruit. You can't really think of gravity without thinking of Newton and the apple. But, funny story, Newton uh, never wrote down the story about the apple. And instead, he talked about it way later in his life. There's no solid, hard evidence that an apple fell and anything happened. And especially not that it hit him in the head. Here's what I could find about Newton and his apple. So, funny story, Newton's at Cambridge. This little thing's happening over in Europe. Maybe you've heard of it, the bubonic plague. So Cambridge is all like, whoa, this is a big deal. We should probably close for a little while. So he's at home at his family farm and he's there for a few years while, you know, Europe handles this messy plague. Uh, he's there for a few years while Europe handles this messy plague business. And while he was there, he recounted much, much, much later as an old man to his biographer, William Stuckley, after dinner, the weather being warm, I went into the garden and drank tea under the shade of some apple trees. And he asked himself, 
Why should that apple always descend perpendicularly to the ground, occasioned by the fall of an apple, as he sat in a contemplative mood? Why should it not go sideways or upwards, but constantly to the Earth's center? Assuredly, the reason is that Earth draws it. There must be a drawing power in matter, and the sum of the drawing power in the matter of the Earth must be at the Earth's center, not in any side of Earth. Thought Newton, allegedly. More or less, this story that he was telling, there's no proof that it actually ever happened, although people don't doubt that it probably did. But Newton told it again and again and again. He wanted there to be this kind of myth or mythos about it. So the head of archives at the Royal Society of Britain says, quote, the story was certainly true, but let's say it got better with the telling, which I think is just the best. Newton never wrote it down, and he wrote a lot. And instead, it just shows up in his biography. But it kind of doesn't matter. It's just fun, right? The important thing is Newton looked at gravity, and he said, let's figure that out. And he applied the same ideas broadly. So he looked at the moon and the planets, and he thought, this is being held together by gravity. Gravity is drawing this. And he created this law of universal gravitation, which, uh, let me read it to you. The force of attraction between any two bodies in the universe is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. And this influenced the next 200 years of gravitation and the understanding of it. It explained planetary motion. It helped Adams and Leverrier both independently discover Neptune because of orbital perturbations of Uranus. This law was incredible. It changed how we looked at our own universe and our solar system, but it was also wrong. <laughs> so hold that thought just for a second because I have to actually tell you about the socks that I'm wearing right now. They are called Bombas and they're the most comfortable socks in the history of feet. Well, the history of socks at least with an arch support system that provides extra support where you need it most, and a cushioned footbed that is reinforced for comfort without added bulkiness, these Bombas feel like a hug around your foot. All of my other socks, they just don't seem as good now. So go to bombas.com slash seeker and use the code seeker for 20% off your first order. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash seeker, code seeker, and you will get 20% off your first order. Okay, so let's back up. What is gravity anyway. Like, what do we know about it? Gravity is a force. And today we've learned that there are four fundamental forces in the universe. There's gravity, and that was the first one to be described. Newton just went over that. There's also electromagnetism. That was described a little later in the 19th century. Both of these are apparent. You can see and experience them out in the world. Create an electromagnet, you can see that it does something, right? But there are also two other forces. There's strong and weak forces. The 20th century, when these were discovered, it's the atomic age, we found that the strong force holds atomic nuclei together, and the weak force is stuff like radioactivity. So first, gravity, as we understand it, appeared really, really soon after the Big Bang, like 1 times 10 to the negative 43. It's, it's really, really, really soon. Just after the Planck era, if you want to go look that up. And the really most important thing to understand is that gravity showed up really quickly, and it's a property of all matter. But what causes it? Why did it show up just then? Shrug? We don't really know. This is about all we know so far. The thing is, we're trying to describe as much of gravity as we can. So without knowing all the pieces, we're going to get some stuff wrong. And that is why Newton was wrong with the law of universal gravitation. He didn't know enough. The thing that was wrong is not everything, so it's a small part of it. Newton didn't know enough about gravity to fully describe it. Newtonian gravity is fine for big concepts like planets and moons, but it's not precise enough for very small things. And in fact, Newton was assuming a flat universe that was pretty empty, not a lot going on, still pretty clean and perfect, more Ptolemaic in that way. And then our bay, Albie Einstein, shows up, and he realizes that space and time are not separate things. They're a fabric. So if you think of a bowling ball on a latex sheet, you put this really massive ball in the middle, and it has so much mass that it also has so much gravity. And if we're all holding the sheet at the edge and keeping it taut, you put it in the middle, it distorts the sheet, right? Distorts time and space because of its gravity, because of its mass. It's not just a force, but gravity is a geometric 
consequence, writes Cosmos Magazine. So if you think of the bowling ball with more mass, making more distortion in the universe, a tennis ball would have way less mass. So it has an almost imperceptible distortion of the surrounding fabric of space and time based on its gravity. And Einstein came up with math to describe this multi-dimensional gravity. Essentially, he took Newtonian gravity and he said, this isn't quite right, let's tweak it, let's make it more accurate. This is why, by the way, black holes and stars can bend light and why Earth orbits the sun the way that it does. Gravity isn't just a direct path. You know, the sun doesn't have a string and swings us around. It's instead a multidimensional geometric relationship between the two celestial bodies. And there's tons of research to back this up that I'm not going to get into. But we still haven't figured out what causes gravity yet. We still don't understand its basic piece, and that is the graviton, or so the theory goes. Each of these four fundamental forces is carried by a particle. So electromagnetism has the photon, the strong force has the gluon, the weak force has W and Z boson. Gravity, we assume, has a graviton, but we have not found it yet. So gravity is confusing because we have all these laws to describe it, and they work for this desk or for my arm or whatever, but they don't apply to subatomic particles for some reason. And to quote CERN, quote, the quantum theory used to describe the micro world and general theory of relativity used to describe the macro world are difficult to fit into a single framework. So we still don't quite understand gravity all the way. We're sort of like Newton right now. We've got a good understanding of gravity. We still need it. We still need to understand it, but we need more information. Einstein's theory is better than Newton's, but doesn't quite cut it all the way. So what's next? We've got top men and women around the world working on it, and when we figure it out, whoo, boy, it's gonna be great. But till then, gravity is a great idea and a law. This episode was made possible thanks to WGU, the online university that's changing lives by changing higher education. WGU is affordable and offers degrees in business, IT, and healthcare. Their innovative learning model is designed to fit the lives of busy adults. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash seeker. For more about gravity, come back next week. And in the meantime, check out all the other seeker videos on this channel. You can find more seeker on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. Just look for seeker. You can find me out there too. I'm at Trace Dominguez. See you next week with more on this heavy topic.